this video, this is uh, I'm going to go in depth on the issue of Bruce Lee uh, and whether or not Bruce Lee uh, was legitimate. Uh, if not, why not? Uh, if so, why? Um, why he was. Okay, uh, I'm going to say here um, that I'm going on an authority uh, on this. And uh, the authority that I'm going on mainly is me. Mainly I'm going on me. Okay? I'm the authority. Where I am looking at this man and I'm using my judgment. And based on my experience and based on what I've seen, I'm more correct on where he is, where he would have been than anyone else. That's right. Than anyone else. Why? Because I've seen the best... I've seen the best do what they do. I've seen the best do what they do. Some of the greatest fighters ever, I've seen them live. Some of the best fighters or trainers of fighters ever in full contact have been my teachers. Okay? And people I know personally. Bare knuckle. Okay? I've seen some of the best fighters in tournaments. I used to train MMA fighters. Okay? So I am the authority that I'm going to use, and I'm going to, I know people might think it's arrogant, but the bottom line is, Joe Rogan can't say what Bruce Lee is, okay? Because Joe Rogan is not even a martial artist, all right? Dana White can't say what Bruce Lee is, because Dana White, like, like, uh, like Floyd Mayweather said, is a complete nut of fraud. He gets some tattoos, shaves his head, and automatically he's a tough guy. Tough guy. There are a lot of people in Jeet Kune Do, right, who are not, who are not experts on what Bruce Lee is, on what Bruce Lee is not, okay? That's, that's the bottom line, because there's some things that they haven't done, okay? Some things they haven't seen, okay? I am going to use myself as the authority, and I'm going to back up what I say with other people who I know who are authorities, okay? The first thing I want to say before I begin is that Bruce, as a person, was far ahead of his time, as a person, as a person. Because one of the reasons people had an issue with him was he was teaching non-Chinese, okay? But he wasn't just teaching non-Chinese. Some of his closest friends happened to be black people, like Jesse Glover, okay? Who was his first student. Many people believe he was his best student, all right? Um, the fact of the matter is, is that Bruce was far ahead of his time philosophically, far ahead of his time ideologically, Okay? Uh, and maybe quite, quite, uh, uh, and maybe also spiritually. I want to say that Bruce was further ahead than many of the people who are called so-called fans of his today, or people who have lineages today. Uh, there is a certain tinge uh, that still exists today, even when it comes down to Ali. And I do want to hit this because Ali was one person that. Bruce Lee was inspired by, and Bruce actually said that. Bruce went as far as to say, a man with his big of an ego, said that Ali would have beaten him. Now, Bruce Lee said Ali would have beaten him. Now, there are some people that, that, that don't like Bruce saying that. They idolize Bruce so much that they don't like saying it, and they said he tried to be nice. Well, first thing is, Bruce Lee was not that nice of a guy to lie and say something like that. Just like Customato, many people who revere Customato don't know that Customato was so ornery that Customato quite likely would never have tolerated them in his gym. Customato went for no nonsense. He was a dictator in his gym. Bruce Lee was the same way. He had a very big ego. He talked about his ego. He even talked about his temper. Bruce Lee would never have said Muhammad Ali would have beaten him if he didn't believe so. All right? No. Ali would have beaten Bruce unless Bruce used illegal tactics. If it was a straight boxing match, Ali would have destroyed him. Why? Because he was much bigger. And I don't care what you say about anybody, Bruce Lee was not Batman. He was not Superman. He was 145 to 155 pounds. Okay? And when he got up to about 155 pounds, he considered himself to be fat. Okay? This came from eyewitnesses of people who actually knew him. All right? So when he said that Ali would have beaten him, he was right. He was being honest. Ali was fast. Ali had underrated power. He was mobile. All right? 
and he was the man when it comes down to heavyweights. All right, he simply would have beaten Bruce Lee, and Bruce said that. I'm saying that because there is a certain racial undertone amongst people still in Jeet Kune Do, who while they claim to have copied Bruce or claim to be inspired by Bruce, ideologically, spiritually, um, and uh, socially are not on his level. All right, so I do want to get that out of the way. Linda Lee herself said that while Bruce got things from other people, at, he got most from Ali when it came down to boxing. He would watch hours, and this is Linda Lee saying it, he would watch hours of Ali in reverse because Ali had a, a, his left lead. Bruce, as you know, had a right lead. He would watch him in reverse, found a way, because he was very inventive, very creative. Bruce would find, found a way to run a projector in reverse and in slow motion so he could copy Ali's moves. Anyone who's saying, okay, he got something from Jack Dempsey, he got this from that, you know what, again, this is a way, this is a way of diminishing what Bruce, what Ali actually meant to Bruce. When you look at Bruce, do his, do his nose like this and start moving around, Jack, Dem Jack Dempsey never moved around like that. It is clear, it is clear to anyone who is not a racist bigot, right, that Bruce Lee got most when it comes to boxing from Muhammad Ali. Linda Lee said it. Bruce Lee knows it. Every, Bruce Lee would have told you if he was living, all right, point blank period, all right? So I have a big, big issue with the Jeet Kune Do people, right, who claim that they are so involved in Bruce Lee, but still have not reached his mindset when it comes down when it, uh, ideologically, all right? I had to throw that in there because it just pisses me off to no end. You, all, you almost never hear me use that language, but it just... It just ticks me off these these people with their with their crazy way of thinking. Still to this day, you know, just 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 de defaming the guy's name uh, in because of their own their own uh, their own beliefs. Now let me get down. Let me get down to the nitty gritty. All right. Now there are people who look at Bruce Lee, and they say, okay, well, how do you know what Bruce Lee was? All right. Let me say this. As I've said, I've seen the best, and I've also sparred. All right. I've also fought. But the people I've seen who fought, people like um, uh, 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 Luis Delgado, one of the greatest karate fighters without pads that this country has ever produced, the late Luis Delgado, um, Saladin Hill, who happens to be uh, my brother-in-law, and the brother, if it sounds familiar, he's the brother of, um, of Nasiba T. Hill. This man in his 70s, when he was 10, he was a champion of, of no pad karate. All right, punches to the head, okay? He was, when he was 10, he left the martial arts when he was 17, uh, or when he was 13, came back, came back, and was an undefeated kickboxer, all right? Uh, I also have Tanya Hill, all right? One of the first uh, really legitimate champions on the East Coast to continually win females at a time when white belts were thrown in with black belts. She wiped out her black belt competition, all right, before she was even even close to even being a brown belt, all right? There are people that are legitimate that look and say, yes, from what I've seen of Bruce Lee, he could fight. But we're going to go in depth and see how good he could fight, all right? First, I want to say something. Next, I want to say something. Not first. Next thing I want to say is this idea of him didn't, he didn't fight. This idea that Bruce didn't fight. There are people who say that he didn't fight. As though him not fighting means that he wouldn't be able to fight. Well, I think what we need to do is look at sparring. I, for one, know that sparring, in many ways, is tougher than the fight. And that's really why people like Marvin Hagler and other fighters that I won't mention who happen to be some of my favorite fighters, but I won't reveal them because it's my secret. But these particular, uh, um, these particular fighters have said publicly that their training, their sparring is designed to be harder than anything they will experience in the ring. Anyone who looks at gym wars sees that there are many sparring sessions that are even more brutal than uh, actual fights. Now, Bruce didn't spar with people that hard. I mean, people generally didn't try to try to kill Bruce on the average, like Dan and Asanto, etc. But he did fight contact. So the, or he did spar contact. So to think that a man who, because he didn't fight in competition, would not be able to fight, no. No, that, that, doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't jive. As long as a man is sparring, 
he develops the instincts that will allow him to be able to fight. The only thing he would have to get used to would be rules. All right. Rules. And some of those rules may not be conducive to someone fighting contact. I know myself and I see B.T. Hill um, and, and uh, Saladin Hill back in the day. We got disqualified from a lot of tournaments for hitting too hard for excessive contact. So if anything, Bruce would have to get used to the rules. But to think that he couldn't be a good tournament fighter, perhaps uh, because he didn't fight in tournaments is ridiculous. Let's also look at what it takes to be a good tournament fighter. What it takes to be a good tournament fighter is instinct. Just a little bit of footage that I've seen on YouTube that is available to any of you. You see that he has a great deal of instinct. All right? I won't tell you what he did, but there were things that he's done like, like he did, like countering a punch with a roundhouse kick. Countering a punch with a roundhouse kick. Very few people have done that. Generally, you do not have the speed to counter a punch with a kick. One of the only people I saw do that was Frank Shamrock in his classic fight against Tito Ortiz. I believe he countered a straight right hand with a kick. If you don't have, if you haven't seen it, watch it. You can probably see it on YouTube. It's a classic fight. It's a fight. It was considered to be the greatest, uh, one of the greatest fights, uh, and to some people, the greatest fight of um, in mixed martial arts history. Tito Ortiz defending his title against Frank Shamrock. But when we look at Bruce, it has to be said that he had great instinct. Now, when you're a point fighter, what is the number one thing you need? You need instinct because you're going for points. I have no doubt that looking at Bruce Lee, looking at Lee Jun Fung, which was his name, I have no doubt believing, no doubt, I have no question believing and no, no, no problem believing that had he fought in point tournaments, he would have been lightweight champion in most of them. I have no doubt he would probably be one of the greatest lightweight point champion, point, hard point champions in the martial arts and open tournaments of all martial arts in the world, in history. I believe he would have made the Hall of Fame as one of the best point fighters ever in the lightweight division. Why? Because his instinct, his instinct, his reflexes, he would have scored points all over. He just had that way. The economy of motion, things of that nature, he just had that way. No wasted motion. Um... The closest weapon, his theory, closest weapon to the target, to the closest target. These kind of things would definitely have made him one of the best point fighters in the history of martial arts tournaments. I have no question whatsoever, I have no doubt whatsoever about that. Mixed martial arts. There are some people that believe that Bruce Lee would not have been a good mixed martial artist. I beg to differ. I think that Bruce Lee would have been a very good mixed martial artist. There are people that look and think that he wouldn't have been a great mixed martial artist because he didn't do a lot of grappling. Again, we have Robbie Lawler. We have uh, other fighters. We have so many other fighters that are considered great fighters who did not do a great deal of grappling. I mean, there is, it is necessary for you to be able to get up off the ground. It is necessary for you to know basic takedowns. It is necessary for you to know uh, basic tie-ups uh, for when you're on the clinch, things of that nature. But for the most part, if you know how to fight to your strengths, there's not a whole lot. You don't have to be a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and you don't have to be a Division I wrestler, a Division I uh, a wrestling champion. You don't have to be. When I look at Bruce Lee, I will tell you, now I'm not saying this man who I'm comparing him to is as good as him. What I'm, I'm not saying that Bruce wouldn't have been better than him. What I'm saying is when we are talking about a certain style or a certain uh, dependency on reflexes, a certain dependency on timing, and not a great deal of grappling, I have no doubt in my mind that Bruce Lee, had he been fighting in mixed martial arts today and remained the same person today as he was then, if he could have had the same knowledge, the same style, I will tell you right now that he would have done no less than Conor McGregor. Bruce Lee would not have done any less than Conor McGregor has done in the mixed martial arts if he was living today. I have no doubt whatsoever. Why? Because his reflexes. Why? Because his timing. Why? Because he was a, a pioneer of full contact sparring. Why? Because the amount of grappling he knew was sufficient. It was sufficient. Racing cars outside. It was sufficient to be good in mixed martial arts. All right? So I have no doubt that Bruce Lee at 145 would have been a great featherweight champion. I have no doubt that he would have been able, depending on who was champion, he would have been able to move up and win the lightweight title in the UFC. Have no doubt whatsoever. And I believe that if you look at styles, I believe Conor McGregor probably probably comes closest to what Bruce Lee probably would have fought, like similar to him. Now, I know there are people, again, on this Jeet Kune Do thing, you know, who are more idol worshippers than actually people who really look to Bruce Lee because they're doing a lot of things that Bruce Lee wouldn't have done. 
You know, a lot of these people trying, I'm just throwing this in there. Bruce Lee would have taken the best out of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He would not have tried to be a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Bruce Lee would have taken the best out of Muay Thai. He would not have tried to get certified as a Muay Thai instructor. So there are a lot of people in Jeet Kune Do really who are actually doing what is more kickboxing than, than anything that Bruce really had in mind. Uh, and that, that being the case, that putting that aside, I have again no doubt that Bruce would have win, won uh, the, the featherweight title and quite possibly lightweight title in mixed martial arts. Have no question and I'm at least he would have done as much as Conor McGregor. Um, next, and finishing this up, uh, Bruce Lee and, and, um, uh, was he, uh, where would I, where would he stand as, as, as a martial artist? Bruce Lee, <clears throat> in a, in a scene in Longstreet, he was actually a trainer or a bodyguard or something in, in a series Longstreet. And James Franciscus was Mr. Longstreet, I believe, and he was blind. If you look it up on YouTube, you'll see it. Well, he had Longstreet in a north-south position. Longstreet was down, and he was face down. And he had Longstreet in the, in the, this north-south position and asked him, what will you do? What can you do? So Longstreet was like, what do you mean? He said, well, what, what can you do? He said, you know, how can you defend yourself? Longstreet didn't know. He said, Bruce said, well, you couldn't, can't use your arms. You can't use this. How can you defend yourself? And Longstreet couldn't figure it out, and Bruce said, bite. He said, bite. So Longstreet said, what, bite? And Bruce said, bite. He eventually let Longstreet up and then explained to him why biting was a viable self-protection weapon. Bite. Now, this was in the 70s. This was in the 70s. Today, today, many people in self-protection, some of the most famous people in self-protection are talking about the art of biting, where to bite, how to bite. Bruce Lee was talking about groin strikes, chokes, biting, headbutting, spitting in people's eyes, poking in people's eyes. He was talking about that in the 70s. So not only was Bruce Lee the forerunner of mixed martial arts, but he was a forerunner of real combatives. Not only that was he, was he was one of forerun, forerunners of mixed martial arts, but one of forerunners of real combatives. So when we look and we understand that in Enter the Dragon, he actually, in that scene, in that scene, when they go in and talking to him, I believe the Shaolin Temple, something like that. In that particular scene, we're talking about 73. This man is kicking, he's punching, and I believe he ends the scene with a, with a submission. Okay? So now we're talking about, what, 20 years. We're talking about 20 years, two decades before the UFC. Two decades before the UFC. He predicted in order to be a complete fighter, you have to box. You have to know some boxing. You have to know how to kick, and you have to know how to grapple. He predicted these things. So now you take that. You take his reflexes. You take him talking about biting and eye jabbing and spitting and head butting and things of that nature. And we have to say, we have to say, and I say, as an authority on what I'm talking about. And you rarely hear me say that, but there are too many people who are seen as being authorities for whatever biased reason people have who are absolute frauds. I, Safe Carmen, as an authority, I am saying that yes, Bruce Lee was legitimate in every way and quite, and, and with no doubt, was one of the greatest martial artists, complete martial artists. When we talk about martial, the art of killing, was one of the com most complete martial artists in the history of martial arts. Why? Because his reflexes would have made him one of the best tournament fighters of all time. Two, because his reflexes and his, his, his love for full contact and his understanding of the different ranges and what you need to be a complete fighter, I have no doubt he would have been featherweight champion and quite possibly lightweight champion of the UFC today. When it comes down to him understanding the art of biting, understanding the hit button, and, and just fighting to survive, I have to say also that he would have been hired to train the military and SWAT, the FBI, and the CIA, and people like that today in real self-protection, real fighting. So was Bruce Lee a, flaw, a fraud? Absolutely not. Was Bruce Lee legitimate? Absolutely he was. One of the greatest martial artists with the true sense, in the true sense of martial, one of the greatest martial artists that ever lived. Not all of the people who claim to have ties to him are, but he certainly was. Uma Fight Camp, Safe Carmen, train hard, train smart. See you next video.